Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Welcome to this reflection for the day of Pentecost, the day on which we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, enabler, comforter, and sometimes disturber too. Our opening prayer picks up on the theme of the imagery of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Wild Spirit of God, come refresh and restore us. Blow through our tiredness, disturb our dull routines. Awaken our expectations, alert us to your presence. Excite our faith until the fire of your love takes hold in us again and your Pentecost light warms every heart and draws others to you, the source of all life and joy. Amen. In the verbal imagery of scripture and subsequent artistic interpretations, the Holy Spirit has been represented in different ways. At Jesus' baptism in the River Jordan, the Gospel writers all depict the Spirit of God descending on Jesus like a dove. In the reading we'll hear shortly from Acts of the Apostles, the Holy Spirit is depicted as a mighty wind and tongues of flame. In the Old Testament, the Jewish scriptures, the Spirit is depicted as Ruach, the very breath of God. And certainly John picks up on that in his Gospel, where Jesus appears after his resurrection to the disciples and says, receive the Holy Spirit and breathes on them. That encounter takes place on the very first Easter day. And it's an imagery that's been picked up by a well-known hymn writer. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. It is, however, Luke's account from his Acts of the Apostles that shapes much of our thinking about the Holy Spirit and its gift to us at Pentecost. Pentecost was, and still is, a Jewish harvest festival, which takes place 50 days hence Pentecost, after the Feast of Passover. In the reading from Acts we're about to hear, Jews from all over the Mediterranean world have gathered in Jerusalem, where the disciples are still hiding out of fear following the events of the crucifixion and the resurrection. When the day of Pentecost came, they were gathered together in one place when suddenly the sound of a great wind blew from heaven and it filled the house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them voice. Now, there were, staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard the noise, a crowd gathered, and they were utterly bemused, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these people speaking Galileans? Well, how is it that each of us hears them speaking in our native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, uh, visitors from Rome, uh, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues amazed and confused. They asked one another, what can this mean? Some, however, 
made fun of them. And they said they have had too much wine. <laughs> Peter, he stood up with the eleven. He raised his voice and addressed the crowd. These men are not drunk as you suppose, it's only nine in the morning. Rather, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. In the last days, says the Lord, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. On your men servants and your maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. There will be wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, the moon will be turned to blood on the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Elsewhere in scripture there is the image of the Holy Spirit as a gentle dove or as the life-giving breath of God or Ruach. But in the account of Pentecost, we see the Holy Spirit in loud and dramatic form, a mighty blowing wind and of tongues of flame. It's a frightening image and people are scared out of their wits. They also witness extraordinary things that they can't explain. The Holy Spirit is depicted in power in the account of Pentecost. But there are other images for the Holy Spirit too. The Celtic tradition is an ancient Christian spirituality from here in the British Isles that can trace its roots back to the 5th or 6th centuries. In Celtic tradition the Holy Spirit is depicted not as a dove or a mighty wind or as flames but by the wild goose. I like to think in those terms when considering that reading from Acts of the Apostles. The Holy Spirit of Pentecost is well represented by the honking and flapping of a wild goose, causing a fair amount of chaos and disarray to those around. I think it also fits well with the opening verses of Genesis, where the breath of God is described as brooding over the waters. Anyone who's walked a canal towpath knows about geese. They are noisy birds that get our attention and maybe they challenge us too. They might block our path, they might change our direction or even give us a bit of added impetus as they chase us down the towpath. The Holy Spirit is a little bit like that. We might think we know where we're going and we're going at our own speed but God may have other ideas. But wherever we find ourselves, God's Spirit is with us. Let us pray. Great Spirit, wild goose of the Almighty, be my eye in the dark places, be my flight in the trapped places, be my host in the wild places, be my brood in the barren places, be my formation in the lost places. Amen. As always, thank you for being part of this reflection today and there is a written version on the website. Until next week, take care, stay safe and remember that the best of all, God is with us. <laughs>